Hey guys, today I wanted to make a video to show you how to replace the door seal in an LG or Kenmore washing machine. A lot of these are the same. The Kenmore is made by LG, these ones are. My model number begins with 41162, but yours may be similar even if it's not quite the same. So it seems to be a very common problem with these LG and Kenmore washers. This door seals leak and also they don't drain properly down in here. They get really nasty and moldy. I don't know if you can see all that. I don't want to show you too much. But even if we leave the door open, it never dries out, it gets moldy, so I'm gonna replace that whole door seal. A lot of times, if they're leaking as well, this will take care of the same issue. Also, I wanted to mention that my dryer and washer are stacked like this, and you don't need to completely remove it like I did if you don't want to. You can just remove this dryer off the top of it, and then as long as you have a little room to get in the back to remove the screws, which I'll show you a little later in the top there, then you can do everything with leaving it right in place just like it is. So to do this repair today, you'll only need a few tools. You'll need a little bit of dish soap at a certain point. You'll need a small pliers. I just use a vice grip, but a pliers, either one. You'll need a Phillips screwdriver or a Phillips screw gun will work too, which I use in this video. And you'll need the spring removal tool, which is only about $15. And I'll show you where you can get that spring removal tool. But you'll definitely need that. It makes it so much easier. First thing that you really need is a spring removal tool because there's two springs that we're gonna need to remove. And I'm gonna be testing these out and show you which one that will work well. This is a $15 tool. This is a $50 tool by LG. So the first thing we need to do is remove a spring right here. You basically just have to release the tension, then it pops off. Now we're gonna peel this loose. Shove it inside there. This is pretty hard to show, but there's a safety switch right inside this latch right here, and you have to disconnect it right there. Do that is you just depress on this side and slide it straight down like this. Now down here in this bottom left-hand corner, you can open this up and remove it. You have that access cover off, then you need to pop this tube loose, and then you need to remove these two Phillips screws right here, so remove those. Then this should be able to just pop out of here. Then we also have to remove this Phillips screw right here. Now we move on to the back. What I did with this nasty hose, and something you can do too, if you pop this loose of that clip, then you can just wrap it in a bag, have it popped in there, then it's out of your way, and it won't get any nasty on your floor. And what you need to do then is remove this screw and this screw right here. You don't have to worry about this one. And I have a stacking kit on here, and if you have the stacking kit, you don't have to worry about removing those. Just simply these bottom ones right here. Just like in the front, you can use a Phillips screwdriver or I have a screw gun set up with a Phillips bit. If you put it on low, you can just remove these. Now that you've loosened the top, just grab it and slide it straight back. It just pops up. Now we can just pull this out, release it right here. Now that we've removed that tray, there's two screws right there we need to remove. And also in the opposite corner, in the back right here, we have to remove that one. Now we are ready to remove this part. Either watch, there's a tab right inside here and here and here. So you have to watch for those. So just be gentle and it should just pull out of there and you wanna just lay it there. You don't wanna take it completely off. This next part, close the door and latch it. Then you have three screws right here to remove and three over on this side to remove. I would recommend is remove these three screws Remove the two on the edge, but leave this one right here because that'll hold the door until you're ready. And then remove that one last and be prepared that this is gonna come out a little bit. So you can grab it and just lift it straight up. Now tip it forward a little bit. It comes out easier that way. And then you can just lift straight up. Yeah, that front part just sits on these tabs right here, these three. That's why it's easier to tip it forward to get it out of there. Okay, so the next thing is to use a pliers or a small vice grip is what I'm using. And you can just unclamp this one right here. Now we're gonna reuse this clamp on the next one. So you can just pull it off and save it. So while I'm doing this, I discovered, look how plugged this pipe is here. I think that's part of the problem why this thing wasn't draining properly. See how nasty that is in there? So what I'm gonna do is just remove this one right here remove this and check it. I would recommend doing this even if you're replacing it because it's leaking, not because of this problem. But this end right here is clear. So what we're gonna also do, remove this. You can slide it down. 
and check it out. It's completely clear. Can't really see through there. But this here is the plugged part. Look how nasty that is. So I would recommend to just take the time and check this out while you're at it. Make sure that yours isn't plugged. Now, the, if you are having this issue with it being plugged and not draining properly, which it seems like that's our problem, I want to replace this door seal because it's been moldy for so long, there's no way to really actually clean that. Or what my thoughts are is that maybe every so often you could run something through there like that's flexible and gentle so it doesn't tear it up and you could make sure that that's clean. Because it seems like once it gets down this neck down part, then the hose is bigger and it's not a problem. I'm pausing in the video just to talk about this for a minute because I think this is very important. So you got that all cleaned out. It was so nasty. I even flushed this pipe a little and there was some caked up on the side that wasn't very much. But now it is very clean. And also, I checked this part right here. I would recommend checking that. Now that that's clean for sure, you can go ahead and rechatch it and put the clamp back on. Okay, so the last step is to get this outside boot off and locate your spring and use your tool to stretch it. You should just be able to pull this right off. All right, so this is the new door seal, and this is the $15 spring puller. It seemed to work just fine instead of getting the $50 LG one. So I'll include a link down in the video description below the video where you can find this for the best price where I found it anyway. Also, make sure that you research your model number washer and make sure that this is going to fit whatever part you get. You might just have to do a little cross-referencing, but this exact part will actually fit a lot of different models. So just make sure that that part is what you need and you should be all set. Next tip that I've seen and it works really well, I'll pass it along to you guys, is just use some dish soap. And it doesn't take much, but to get it down in this crack all the way around, just slide it around with your finger, make sure that's lubed up really good, and it'll slide on a lot easier. So it is pretty straightforward to tell which one's the bottom, of course, because of where the drain hooks up. And they actually give you a little spot right here to show you where the top is. So you just get it pretty close and it should slide right on. It was a little bit of a struggle, but not too bad. The best advice I can give is just try to get it started in the top, get it as close as you can. You can see that little tab there and just keep working it around. And then when you're all done, you can actually rotate this thing a little bit by twisting it with two hands, one on each side. And then see that tab right there? You wanna to try to line that up right with that middle one right there. And then it'll be lined up once this gets clipped on right there. You can see just like that, that'll be the center. So even if you don't have it perfect, you can rotate it a little bit. So yeah, just keep working it around. What I did is just kind of started in the top, worked down a little bit then came over here and worked down a little bit, and then just kind of worked it around. Make sure it's seated all in place. You can kind of get a feel for where it is right in place. There shouldn't be much of a gap. There's like an eighth of an inch, but you can tell that it's popped on there because it won't go any further. Then you can get your spring on. In case you lost track, which one was the one you took off first? The front spring, which one's the rear? The rear one is a little bigger, so if you lay them on top of each other, you can tell that. Also, the rear one has this little extra part right here, the little loop in there. And also when you're putting it in, you want to make sure that that is facing back out because you don't want it to puncture your seal. So that is the one we put on next. So now you can kind of get it started in place. And I believe this second loop here is for the spring pliers, but it doesn't seem to want to stretch it far enough. So I'm actually going where I took it off in the end of the spring on one end and in the end of the band on that end. And then you just want to stretch it out. I don't know if it matters where this goes, but I'm gonna to try to keep it kind of in the same spot as before, as far as the spring goes. If you get tired, you can let off and take a break and then redo it. So I got it in position and fastened. You just wanna make sure to check that it's in that channel all the way around. You can feel it all the way down underneath here. Just check it all the way around and make sure it's right back in there where it needs to go. Next thing is we wanna hook this tube back up and transfer a clamp over, and I found it's almost easier to just move this one down out of the way, put this one down here, then get this hooked up. Make sure that it's connected properly. Then you're gonna release your clamp in the right spot. Then we can move this one up. So make sure they're in the right spot and double check that one back there. And you should be good on that part. Now we are ready to put our front on. Just make sure to line the three slots in the bottom with the three tabs sticking up. So sometimes these two middle screws right here don't line up perfectly. You can either push down on this part as you're putting the screw in, or you can pull up on this silver part right here, the this support, 
and you can line them up and then put them in. Down here in the bottom, you can put the one screw right in that hole right there. Next, you can pop in this plastic part right here. Be sure to feed this rubber hose through this hole right here. And then you can put that screw and that one back in. And then you can clip this rubber back in once you get the screws in. And of course, you can pop this back in. Now the next thing before fastening this seal onto the front, make sure to clip this wire back into this safety thing so it can tell when the door's shut. I can't really show this the best, but you pretty much just have to slide it straight up. Would have been nice to do it when the front was off, but it doesn't have enough slack in the wire. That's why you have to do it after it's on there. Now I like working my way from the bottom up since we got the bottom taken care of. This part here, you have to pull this seal out over and then you have to kind of roll it over this part. The spring is gonna go in this slot, so it's not this one, it's the one back in here. The last fold that has to go over that. So you just have to keep working your way around that. So you'd be able to tell when it's in there correctly because it pretty much sits flat without even having the spring in there. So we just make sure that's seated all the way around, then we're ready for our spring. Now for this spring, it actually does have a spot where it needs to go straight down. It has actually a, re a little relief in the bottom here for where that has to go. So you wanna make sure to turn that straight down and you can get it started in there. So now that you're in most of the way and you have the spring tool on, then just squeeze it for tension, release. And you can tell when it's in all the way. And yeah, just make sure you're lined up pretty much straight up and down in that relief in the bottom. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's in that little relief that's cut in there. Next, we can grab this part and just set it down. into the tabs that go down like that. Make sure that it's seated down in here correctly, then it'll just snap into place. Now it should be locked in there firmly with the tabs and everything when you push on it. It should be good and tight. Then you can go ahead and put that screw in right there and then put those two screws back in. The two screws that are really long are for the drawer and the short screw is for the other corner. Then you can slide the drawer back in. All that's left is the top. We'll just set it on. Then slide it straight forward. Then we can just put the last two screws back in. All right guys, well I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for future videos. I hope this thing fixed your washer, that it doesn't leak anymore or isn't plugged anymore, and you have a nice, clean washer again. Thanks for watching, guys. Happy washing.